Uh, Jeff DeGraff of Renaissance Macro Research. Jeff, uh, good to see you. Thanks so much for joining us. We've got lots of uh, charts to get to uh, that you've prepared for us. But, but headline, before, before we dive into those, what do you make of the, uh, the levels that we closed at today, particularly in the NASDAQ comp and the NASDAQ 100? Well, I, I think the key word here, Wilf, is duration. And long duration assets are under pressure. And that's not unusual when you see rates rise. And we're even seeing real rates rise a little bit. They're still negative. I think that's still good news for assets overall, but those high duration assets, those with sort of high in the sky expectations are the ones that are most vulnerable when you have those rate rises. So pretty much par for the course with, uh, with how we're seeing things. And what are the sort of support levels and, and uh, when do you start to get worried for the, the, the NASDAQ, let's say, that, that we're going to see a much bigger and sudden fall from here? Well, I, look, I think you're going to have, um, you know, probably susceptibility for another three to maybe five percent there. But I, I don't see much more than that. Breadth generally is good. I think this is rotational in nature. Uh, we tend to, to believe that the pie is getting bigger, um, which means, you know, instead of having to sell your NASDAQ names to buy your, uh, say, more traditional cyclical names, there's actually money coming in from various assets, whether that's on the sideline or in the bond market. Uh, the S&P, which is really the 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 uh, index that we key off of uh, has very good support down around 3,500, the 200 day moving average. So all within the context of an uptrend, I think this is a digestion period as we transition from early cycle, mid cycle. Uh, and I think that's, uh, you know, exactly what you'd expect to see. So you still see a green light for stocks overall. I guess the question, Jeff, is who is going to be in the leadership position? Energy has been the best performing sector so far this year. You have liked it. That's been a good call. Up 30 percent. More gains there? I think so, Sarah. I mean, you know, if you, again, back to the duration idea, it's a low duration asset. And I think when you look over the last five years, I mean, it's probably the main sector that's been underinvested in. Um, it certainly has been vilified from everything from, you know, ESG on down. Uh, so there aren't all that many people. It's certainly not a crowded place to be. And I think people are really underestimating what an infrastructure bill looks like, you know, what, whatever that number ends up being, there aren't many Caterpillar tractors that run on solar. Uh, so, you know, when you make cement, uh, when you move earth, when you make steel, uh, these are pretty energy intensive uh, operations. And I, I think that's underappreciated by the market here. And what about consumer discretionary? Well, discretionary is, is interesting, and it's still actually acting really, really well. It made a new relative strength high earlier in the week. Uh, obviously, it was down today, but still, the trends are very good there. I think that's going to be the most important sector to watch, Wilf, because it tends to be the transition between mid-cycle and late cycle for the equity markets. And when the relative performance of discretionary starts to falter, it's not the end of the world for equities generally, but it does say that we're in that seventh, eighth, maybe ninth inning. That's not happened yet, but I think in the next six months, that's something that we would anticipate to start to see is that transition. The good news is consumer credit, uh, the, the other uh, indicators that we look for to see where the consumer is and whether he's tapped out, they're actually still in really, really good shape. We all know about the balance sheet. You just talked about the checks that are going out. Uh, the consumer is in very, very good shape. Usually when they extend themselves from a credit perspective, that's where we have to start getting worried. I don't think that's in the next month or two. It might be in the next six months, and that's what we're going to keep our eye on. Do you like financials? Financials and energy have moved sort of hand in hand on, on this recovery trade. Sounds like you like energy for reasons like infrastructure spending. What does that mean for banks? Well, you know, banks, uh, whatever the fundamental story might be, higher rates, who knows exactly what it is. They're certainly in, a, in one of the better positions uh, that they've been in from a recessionary standpoint. You know, they weren't the crux of the problem in this one. Obviously, it was the virus, uh, but they were very healthy going into it. And they seem to be, you know, getting their act together. You look at Goldman Sachs, you look at J.P. Morgan, uh, you look at Morgan Stanley, you look at the traditional lenders like PNC or even Wells Fargo. You know, all these are good looking charts that are breaking out, starting to get momentum. And they actually score very, very well in our leadership uh, category and are improving. So I do like financials and whether that's, uh, you know, more normalization in the yield curve, uh, loan growth demand, whatever the case may be. The thing I like about financials the most is that most of the charts look the same. And when they all look the same, it means there's something happening in the big picture that is driving the group. It's not idiosyncratic. So that tends to be good news. So, yeah, we like financials. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.